So the interesting thing is we are now at the BBC and they've opened all this up so they've completely rebuilt. Now what you're looking at here is a stage being built. It's Friday night and the one show like to do their stuff outside and they like to do it live. It's really interesting. So that's the entrance of the BBC. Once upon a time we could never walk down here. But now you can and actually there's even a cost of coffee you can come and have a drink. So the one show do their uh, their thing from inside behind that studio which is a big thing here in the UK seven o'clock every night on a BBC one so prime time telly but on a Friday night they do a live gig which I must admit let's see who's on it tonight and I'll put it on the video down below and also on a weekend they always have politicians coming in and out of here because they have a studio at the very top which I'm gonna zoom in on in a second and they always interview them from outside here what will be complete in London. Oh, there are, fire brigade. Something going on. And there is a studio right at the top there. So that's the BBC. Where a lot of TV programs, if it's not coming from Manchester's media city, and also radio as well comes from here. Radio 1, for instance. Uh, BBC Radio 2. Right, this is the start of Regent Street, and as you can see, you've got traffic down here. This is Portland Place, so we're going to turn here. That's BBC Theatre, which is over there. We're behind the BBC building itself, they've also got the BBC Music the Concert Theatre, where they have lots of gigs. So, that is the Langham Hotel. Very nice, very posh. Here at the top of Regent Street. Also got Langham Church, the All Souls, All Souls Church, opposite. So let's go down Regent Street and see what Regent Street has on offer. And the great thing about coming down to Regent Street, if you're going to come up here to the BBC, if you stand around outside that long enough, you'll see uh, oh, a celebrity or two. Right, that's the Treehouse Hotel is also used a lot by those in the BBC with a sort of a penthouse dining area at the top All Souls Church and then on top of the BBC Last. Yeah. It's good to see that because often you don't get that close to it, but now they've opened it up, which is great. And if you wonder why it went off, I've got to stop my security man who was asking, what am I doing that for? What am I filming? And he got a little bit. Anyway, we've got it, so we can bring it to you. Okay, welcome to the top end of Regent Street. I love Regent Street. I love it because more of the architecture, and it feels like a more classic shopping street. If you've seen the Oxford Street video which we've put out already, um, you'll probably guess my feelings on it. Which is basically, it's been knocked to seven bits, there's lots and lots of different retail outlets. God, that was very politically correct, wasn't it? Um, but I think, I think Regent Street has got a certain, a certain something about it. So this is the Polytechnic, oh Westminster Polytechnic in Regent Street, wow. Prime place, oh I like this, there's another, there we go, right. Between 1962 and 1966, Nick Mason, Roger Waters and Richard White studied at the Regent Street Polytechnic where they formed the band. Any Pink Floyd fans out there? Including myself, I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. There you go. Right. And if you're thinking, who the heck are Pink Floyd? Just put in Dark Side of the Moon. That'll do it. All by one. So, we are walking from the north of Regent Street 
down to Piccadilly Circus. So that's the route we're doing, because I know so many of you love to follow us on a Google Maps. As we're going over Margaret Street, that leads to Cavendish Square, that is the back of John Lewis, down there in Cavendish Square. And Regent Street over the last year or so have made, and as you can see here that's where the curb used to be, have made the walkways so very much wider, so it's easier to walk down, plus they put lots of benches in, and also trees, plants and bushes to make it feel a little bit greener in the centre. There's lots of greenery within London, but in the shopping areas, not usually. So that's nice, and also if you're coming down here for a stroll, and you want to do it gently and, and it's a nice day, who knows, if they do exist in the centre of London, then actually, they've got a nice bunch you can sit on as well, and get hit by the smog. No, Jackie, you can sit there and take it at your own pace. So if you've seen the Oxford Street video, you'll recognise this, Oxford Circus. This is the most expensive area to have a shop in London, here, where Oxford Street meets Regent Street. So the shops we have, we've got Microsoft, over on the corner. Tezinis which is an underwear shop, you've not heard of that one before. We've got Nike, or Nike, depending on which part of the planet you're from. Covers all bases there. And H&M Clothes Shop. Plus you've got all the entrances to the tube station here. And Oxford Street, so. Big thing down Oxford Street. That's not on me. I didn't do it wrong, honestly. And then down that way, down at Oxford Street. Street. Now, like we did on the tour of Oxford Street, if you really want to see London, the shopping places, this is definitely the nicest in the bang of the heart of London's West End. There are other nice places to go, like Knightsbridge, etc. But it's investigating the places that are off it, which are really nice. So, here we've got Prince's Street. And just behind Prince's Street, and also the next one as well, which is Hanover Street, which is the next one we're coming up to, after the big Apple shop you can see right in front of us. That takes you to Hanover Square. It's been closed for a long time. They've actually reopened that so you can get back into the square, which is lovely. Now they had that closed because they were building the new Elizabeth Line, the new railway which goes under London. But now that's almost completed and will be open soon. They've got that open again, so you've got more green area. Love the squares in central London, they really do. And if you want to see what a typical square looks like, a lovely square, then I've put a link to the top of to our video, which is on Grosvenor Square, which is not a million miles away from here. Oh, and the sun is coming out. You must know we were videoing. Shop down the side street, yeah, just a bit down there, about 100 metres, and you get to Hadover Square. So, as we go down Regent Street, and I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll walk this way so you can get more of a feel for the shops that are here. Also, over there. That one, Liberties, we cut back a couple of Christmases with all the wooden oak panelling inside, which is lovely. Um, what you'll find is Maddox Street, which we're crossing over now. And there's an art gallery down there, and often down Maddox Street with a Maddox Gallery, which is no more than about 10 metres down. They have something on the front and have massive heart during Valentine's, Christmas, great decorations. Uh, they can't often have something there, so it's worth popping into. On our left hand side, we have HM Home, which is a biggie. 
There is just something really lovely about the buildings here in Regent Street. That Regency period, the architecture, the columns, it's lovely. So we're now crossing over Conduit Street. If you take a right down Conduit Street, that takes you to New Bond Street. Over here to the left, take that alleyway, and that takes you to Carnaby Street. So Carnaby Street is running parallel with us now, but on the left hand side. Hopefully that gives you a flavour, gives you your bearings of where we are as well. One of the world's most famous toy shops, Hamleys. And they have the street entertainers outside. Always got the street entertainers outside, even if it's quiet inside. Actually, it looks very quiet in there. And if you want to see our video on Hamleys, I've linked that for you. That's about it. something happening there. Your handbags and things, the big Michael Kors. As you can see, it's a very busy road, is Regent Street. <clears throat> and also, it's Regent Street that have got the beautiful lights that hang above them, the angels, which they've had for quite a few years, that hang above them at Christmas. see where Regent Street swoops round to the left towards Piccadilly Circus. So it's not a major long street, although if you're walking with children, it can feel that way. <laughs> but the good news is there are buses that go up and down, and if need be, as you can see, there's always plenty of taxis available to take you. So over here you're looking at Beak Street, down that road takes you to Soho. Put the sign across that says Soho is a fantastic little area to explore with parks, plenty of great places to eat, and also. And I'll put a link to our Soho video up in the top right hand corner. There's also a little game you can play for taking the children down there which is discover the seven noses of Soho and also the two ears of Covent Garden. Yep, it's a little game you can play. So we've done a video on that with the location so you can help you get ready and prepare if you're coming up to London for that one. And um, yes, believe it or not, on the side of some of the buildings are noses. I'll leave it at that. I'll let you check out the video, top right corner. Now, here we're crossing over Hendon Street, and if you take a left, sorry, take a right down there and do a right again, it's the door where that David Bowie's album was photographed. That's the Bowie album, Ziggy and the Spiders from Mars, Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. And the album was phot photographed, or well, the photographer took the picture there of Bowie coming out of one of the doors, and there's a plaque down there for that. So just to give you an idea, it's nearly midday, so it's lunchtime. And it just gives you an idea how busy it is. And it's Friday. So, not the weekend, but still one of the busier days. And it's still not packed in London, so if you're thinking of coming down, there's still plenty of space to do. Down here, down Virgo Street, if you go down here, that takes you to the Burlington Arcade. Also, if you turn right once you've gone past the big Starbucks there, that takes you to Savile Row. Um, and if you continue straight on, it takes you also to Old Bond Street. And it comes out opposite Tiffany's, right by the side of Ralph Lauren. 
So everything is really, really close knit in London. It really is. And I can't emphasize enough. If you're coming down and you're thinking of going to different places, just check out your Google Maps because things are so close. Well, I'm going to show you this place here. It used to be super dry. I don't know how you say it. Uni Uniqlo. Anyway, we've done a video with you. Because believe it or not, down in the basement, there's an art, there was an art deco barbers. And because it is listed, it's got listing protection, they couldn't strip the stuff out. So if you go down into the basement, go and have a look, you'll see where the art deco barbers is. And they put all the clothes around it. But you can do a little investigation work. There you go, another, another video. Top left there, top right corner. Wow. It's a big Hollister. Now going round, and now we're swooping round. Love this corner. Lovely swoop around to the left towards Piccadilly. Now, if you're watching this and you're thinking, oh, love to do it, but it's raining, um, we've done a video on a tour around London using public transport. And actually, we get the bus down Oxford Street and then down Regent Street and we get off, funny enough, on one of the bus stops just down here on the left hand side. So you can enjoy the swoop round to the left of Regent Street, as you can see it now, from a bus. I think nearly all the buses that come down here are double deckers. So if you're lucky, you can get up onto the top floor, get to the front, pretend you're driving the bus, and get a fantastic view of Regent Street and, the, and London from the top deck of a double decker bus. There in front of you, you can see an unmistakable Piccadilly Circus. The back entrance of the Cafe Royal, which actually takes up most of the building behind the shops. down. Let's just give you a swoop of Piccadilly Circus. Shaftesbury statue, otherwise known as Eros. And then just to give you a... Ooh, okay. Now, down on that road there, which is Regent Street St James is as well, the two combined. Right. As you can tell, it's a busy old roundabout. As you can tell, it's a busy old road. Right, so you can see the Duke of York statue, which is that column, and off in the distance, the Houses of Parliament, or the Palace of Westminster, as it is otherwise known. Thanks for me. Regent Street is one of those roads so many people think it is so long, but that's taken less than 20 minutes from end to end. So it really isn't that far at all, and it links a couple of great places. So what was your favorite part of Regent Street? Let us know in the comments down below. And I'm gonna leave you with a video up in the top right hand corner of our walk from Covent Garden to New Bond Street, which takes in Piccadilly Circus at night.